Welcome Battletech enthusiasts. Today we're going to paint House Imara to this standard. The uh, total painting time, that is your personal actual time spent, will be about 30 minutes. You don't need any particular special brushes, you can see the ones I used. The middle one is for metallic paints. Now the specific paints I used here are this Ushapti Bone, because that's an ivory type color. I used black and two different olives which I found make a perfect Liao green. Uh, Glorious Gold, Turbo Dork, uh, Crystal Cave, and Gun Metal. As well as, I'm also using this wash. This is a Grax Earth shade. You also need a bottle of water for dropping and thinning paints. They should have a little tip. You also need just some folded paper towels. You also need a palette. You can see mine's kind of getting grimy. You also need a water cup. You do not need clean water, but it's better. A little nicer if you... You need a paint handle, although I end up finding that I don't use it as much as I think I will. Um, you also need a work light, that is a painting light like this one I put on a little camera stand. Um, and then you do need a piece of bamboo skewer. And for those of us who are getting older, like 45 plus or older, the, our eyes don't work as well anymore. So you, what you need for presbyopia is either a large lensed workstation or what I do is since I'm nearsighted, I just take my glasses off. You also really do not need a lot of space. You don't even need a man cave. All I have is a little man corner, which is just this little small section near the fireplace. So you really don't need much space. And I make YouTube videos here. So you really do not need much space to do uh, painting or even mass painting of mechs. Okay, so now what I'm first going to do is I have this really crappy blue paint job. I'm going to cover it up with the shop bone. These are 2x speed ups on the paint, but I have shown you every single brush stroke. So no stories about how all you have to do is do these layers and those layers. You will see every single brush stroke in my videos, usually. Uh, here I am... Uh, again, 2x speed. I'm first I'm just covering the entire crappy blue paint job with this Ushapti bone. I happen to have two different pots of it. One is for air and one is for layer. I'm using the layer because it's a little stronger. Later I'll kind of touch up the places where the blue is showing through with the air after this paint layer dries. So that's one thing my videos don't show are drying time in between. But anytime you see a break in the video or change in scenes, that pretty much means I walked away for half an hour or maybe even a day or some unknown amount of time to let the paint dry. But it doesn't really matter. You can fit this in into your schedule because you can see that these paint bursts are not that long. So here you see I'm almost done and I'm almost forced to stop because this pet, this mech is now all wet with this Shopti bone and well, that's it. You can't really paint anymore. Um, so I'm just kind of stopping here. After all, it's, this is the initial cover up job to cover up the blue and I don't really care if it's too detailed or not. And there it goes. Part one is done. Okay, now it's time for part two. I'm just going to repaint over the whole thing just with another color of Ushapti bone, uh, another layer. This is just because, again, it doesn't cover blue very well. This is, I want this to be the ivory for the uh, House Imara main color. After all, it is ivory ish color with uh, Liao green and gold accents. So I'm using this ivory or ushapti bone because I happen to have a pot of it although well, you can use any any color I found that this matches the camo specs online the like the some graphics I found that represents this house perfectly I also found these two particular shades of green this uh, US olive drab and this uh, medium olive mixed 50 50 makes a perfect Liao green it just looks exactly like what you see in demonstrations of Liao green. I was having trouble fi finding good green, but that's finally, I figured out that was the perfect mix. Okay, now I'm finally gonna start accenting or putting the Liao green on. And I've decided to only do the tips of the arms and tips and the ends of the legs. Basically, the arms of, the ends of the arms and legs in Liao green, the body will stay this kind of khaki-ish looking Ushapti bone. And then I'll also add little accents of gold later too. That basically I want 80% of the mech to be ivory, 20% to uh, and maybe 15% to be green and maybe 5% gold. Although maybe 10% 10% might be better because if you look at some pictures of House Imara, it seems more like a 
even mixed between the green and the gold as very light minor accents and the majority of it being this ivory type color. So here I am, I'm mixing these two shades of green that I described. This is the US olive drab and the medium olive. 50-50 mix, add a little bit of water to it, not much to thin it. I actually want it to be relatively thick, um, but not so thick that it washes away too much detail. And now I'm just gonna carefully craft on or put it onto the legs here. This is a bit of a longer step. Uh, you can see here. Again, I want to show all the brush strokes, so this is gonna be a little bit slow. Maybe I should cut this out in some version or something. Um, but in any case, the, one of the toughest choices you have to make is in what fraction of the mech do you actually paint what color? And how do you divide the colors? And the best advice I can give there, which I really don't know the answer to, is um, try to follow panel lines. Don't like try to paint in the middle of an open space and make a line there because you won't do it unless you're an expert. Also, I realized that I made a mistake in making the base too much like the feet. And I'm hoping that the wash at the end will fix this problem because I will not because uh, I, I want the feet to be a different color green than the base. But since this is my standard base that I'm using, that, that my standard technique for making bases for green base, uh, this is kind of what I have. And I may end up uh, touching that or changing that. But here, I, again, I'm going to now do the other parts. Again, this first run around, you, you don't necessarily even need to get the base coat right because you can... Oh, you can see I have a fake resin base there that I've molded off a old retro uh, metal base using silicone rubber and resin. But this is actually a metal mech, by the way. Just so this is so this is like a real vintage mech stuck on a fake vintage base. And the reason I just didn't want to keep buying more and more vintage parts, so I just started mass producing my own. Well, for my own personal use, I don't sell them or anything. I basically make my own parts and my own mechs. Um, but this is a real metal mech on a self-made fake base that happens to be molded after the uh, Ralpartha original lead bases. Okay, so anyway, now I'm uh, again putting the this this can be thick and dark because it's just arms and legs, ends of the arms and legs, and the color will change a little bit when you do the the wash at the end, that brown wash. I wanted the mechs to have a, like a little bit of a dirty color to them and also I want the lines to poke out more because the panel lines kind of get obscured by especially these these various different paints. So that brown wash shadows them a little more, makes the panels stick out more. Now, if you really want to spend a lot of time painting, the flow is base coat, wash, highlight. But I don't do highlights. I stop at the wash and the reason for that is highlights take a lot of time and personally, you know, I have a job, I've got a kid, I've got a house, mortgage to pay. I don't have time to do as much as I'd like. Uh, so I have to be very efficient with the time that I do have. So whenever I make a video, that's why my videos tend to be kind of unpolished. I hope that the content speaks for itself and not the lack of polish and I, I kind of don't really care if I have a hundred thousand followers or whatever like some of the guys who basically really are in into making polished videos like Death From Above Wargaving who I really respect a lot but it's just not my style. My style are kind of these more gritty real videos, more gritty paint jobs. This is what you would actually do at home yourself um, you can see here I'm using the paint handle. Now I'm finally putting the, this is glorious gold, I'm using that as the house Imara is allowed to use gold. Other houses are not, usually in the, within Liao and within the Capellan Confederation because they've proven themselves on the battlefield. Really, I, the reason I chose to paint this particular Liao house is because I didn't want just to have just some boring mech. I wanted something cool with gold. And... Uh, I also noticed that the final battle in the Succession Wars, fourth, uh, fourth Succession War Battle Pack, the original vintage one, has House Imara in it. 
and say, hmm, you know what? I should paint my mechs for that battle to be House Imara. Now, the uh, the awesome is not one of those mechs. Those are basically some cataphracts and blackjacks. Um, but I decided that I'm going to just start painting a bunch of House Imara mechs so that my Capellan mechs will, some of my Capellan mechs will just kind of shine with a little bit of gold on them to show off that they're battle hardened and battle proven rather than just some run of the mill um, groups or companies or, or whatnot. So now here it is, the battle proven house Imara. Now it's important that you don't put too many colors down as your base coat colors unless you're super pro at painting or something because I've found that it kind of looks ugly. So if you, three is already pushing it. Like here I've got three colors. And if, if you were to add a fourth color, this would look just really ugly unless you're super pro. So even three is kind of pushing it. Um, I really don't uh, think that it, it, I mean, basically your base coats should be just two colors or one color, maybe three colors like this one. And that's kind of it. And then you basically wash on top of that with a darkening wash. And then you might highlight uh, with a dry brush. Again, I avoid that again because there it, it can quickly become an infinite time sink to try to blend in or wet blend in or dry brush in some highlights and whatnot. So instead I rely on using like color changing paints for canopies and things like that rather than trying to use skill to make lensing effects. So uh, Turbo Dork Crystal Cave is the perfect color changing paint that looks like a different glinty metallic blue depending on what angle you look at it from if you underpaint it with black first. So I'm going to do that with the cockpit here, although it doesn't show on that front picture, but the, the you'll see the cockpit class will actually get uh, Crystal Cave details on it. Okay, now here I'm just... I'm putting the black down on the cockpit here. That's going to get crystal caved later after it dries up. I'm also, I noticed that some of my painting has kind of ruined some of the guns a little bit because I this is a repaint from some crappy blue paint job. So I'm going to just retouch the black and then I'm going to retouch those later with gun metal and possibly rewash them again with the Agrax Earth Shade. So I'm kind of undoing some of the damage from the base coat work by re basing these as black. So this is kind of a repaint rather than stripping and painting from scratch. So I don't know how this is going to turn out yet because this is actually my first House Imara mech. Um, so I'm just going to see what happens and I'm just going to post this and see and just see what people think of it. Later on I think I'm going to paint many of my Liao mechs as uh, House Imara, and then probably I'll get better as I go, and then maybe I'll post the mass painting video, kind of like I did that one mass painting camo for Davian. So I'll probably paint a mass painting demo on House Imara. Okay, now we're at the wash stage. And now I'm going to take this flat, kind of this large flat brush, because you don't really need detail with the wash. You just need to just splatter it all over the place. Now notice I have not yet gun metaled the guns because I have decided that I'm not going to wash over the gun metal this time. But notice, I see, I don't really need a fine brush for this. This wash is just, just goes everywhere. And that's also why I didn't do the turbo dark on the cockpit yet. But I do have the black underlayer because I want the cockpit to shine. So I don't want to wash over it, obviously. And this kind of makes some of the panel lines stand out. I don't know if I'll have to wash this again another layer another time, but... This is good enough. I'm getting. I'm trying to avoid getting the wash on the ground, which I might touch up later. Um, but that, anyway, that's the washed up now. It looks like this now. It's not quite done yet. So now I'm going to fix up some of the problems. I don't want to spend too much time on this because you can spend an infinite amount of time painting and then you get no time to do anything else. So that's no good. Although if you really get into it, I mean that's great. But now I'm going to uh, add a little. Now this metallic is very important. That I had that one middle brush that I had. That's my crappy metallics brush because metal paints destroy brushes. So 
This is my crappy metallics brush. I use it specifically to for paints that destroy brushes like metallics. So I would not use my nice finer brushes or that wide tipped brush just because I don't feel like buying another one after a few uses. So now here comes the uh, all the different PPCs are getting their paint jobs, their metallics, and I'm also going to add it to the... Now when you thin metallics, which I have done, you'll notice it settles pretty quickly, so you have to keep re-stirring it every once in a while. And now the little illuminator light there. Um, and that's normal. And But it looks really cool, especially o over black, because it kind of fades in. It's like this blackened metal that's kind of shiny, metallic, half silver, half black, and it has a cool effect. But it only really works if you underpaint black first. Now I'm going to put this little turbo dork down. And this is a small little dab there. It looks white initially. I use a fine brush, but it'll actually turn blue when it hardens or when it dries. So initially it looks kind of whitish, and but it turns like this glowy blue that changes colors. So I'm now going to add it to the PPCs. And also to the, I'm also just maybe going to add it to the lens tips and whatnot. But there, this the one thing about this kind of color changing paints is I don't trust them to not ruin brushes. So I don't put my best fine brush on it. I put kind of like a second tier fine brush. And then here's now what it looks like now. I'm kind of taking a look at it here, the final look. And there it is completed to that standard. I decided to touch it up a little bit. Um, all I'm doing is retouching the front, which is with a little more ivory slash use of the bone. And then I'm putting back some uh, wash on the metal, yeah, putting some more wash on it. This is just because some blue was poking out through the front. So this is just a retouch. Um, it's only the front panels got retouched with the Ushapti bone and then the whole significant part of the mech got rewashed with the Agrax earth shade, but that's it. Everything else is pretty much, this is it, what it looks like wet. And this is now what it looks like dry. So it's pretty much the same. So that concludes my um, Capellan Confederation. Uh, painting video. I hope you like this. If you do, please subscribe or give it a thumbs up. In case you don't want to subscribe, just give it a thumbs up. That'll help a lot. Maybe we'll spread this video and it'll make me motivated to build even more videos. So thank you and good luck painting.